In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to preview your toolpaths. Now, you can see on the worksheet, I've got some vectors to work with, and I've also set up some toolpaths for you as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop up to the toolpath menu. So follow my mouse pointer to the top left, and we'll click on this button here to switch to the toolpath menu. And here are my toolpaths. Let's just activate those, see what they look like. So we've got our pocket to cut around our welcome to our home text, and we've got the cutout pass on the outside. Now, what we're interested in is looking at the preview for the toolpath. So let's pop up to this option here, which is preview toolpaths. It has an icon of a play button in red there for you. So let's click on that. You notice you're presented with a slew of different options right away. Now, I'll go through this in order, but what I want you to pay attention to is that you can turn your toolpaths off here so you won't see them on the worksheet, but you can activate them as I did earlier. So you can do individual toolpaths as well as both of them at the same time. Now, if we go up to the top here, we have the active sheet and it says sheet one. And if I hover over this palette here, it shows me edit material settings. Now, if I left mouse click on that, some of you may recognize this drop down from the job setup sheet from when you first open the software. Now, when you first open the software, you can set your material as I have done here, which was Canadian maple, but you can also uh, change this to a variety of different materials. You can see I've got plenty of different woods here. I have uh, metals, I have stone, and at the bottom here I've even got some plastics as well. You also notice at the very top there's this option here to use solid color. So if I left mouse click on that, you'll notice a secondary drop down list becomes available, and it's already reflected this in the worksheet here, where I can choose a solid color to change to for my material. So let's say I'm using some acrylic or maybe some sort of plastic that I'm cutting into on my CNC machine. I can then reflect that by changing the colors here on the worksheet. So let's say I've got a dark green plastic or maybe something like a purple. I can change that here to reflect that. So you can use the solid color option as well. Now you'll also notice that I have the option here to create a new category and add a new texture. So let's say you took a photo image of a texture that you wanted to use. So in my case, I've got a chopping board lying around that I want to uh, cut my design into because I think it's quite a nice material and I want to recycle it. So what we'll do is I'll create a new category and I'll call this category uh, wood custom because it's a wood chopping board. I'll click OK. And now you'll notice I have now have the uh, wood custom category that I've created here. Now what I can do under that category that I've created is add a new texture. So let's look at doing that. So let's left mouse click on add a new texture. And you'll see my window pops up here, my Windows Explorer window. And I've actually gone to the trouble of already uh, saving out a, a JPEG file of a photo I took of my chopping board. So wherever you place this on your PC, you can find this and I'll double left mouse click to bring that in. And then what will happen is it'll apply that texture to this uh, worksheet. So you can see here my uh, in my background here, uh, I've got that chopping board that I've got laying around that I want to cut into here so I can now use that for the preview. Now you may be thinking, okay, well, what if I wanted to have the grain the other way because actually the grain uh, for me is horizontally, not vertically. Well, you can actually change that by simply going into your image outside of the software. So wherever you saved it to, in my case, it was my documents and then my textures folder that I'd created custom for it. So wherever you saved your photo to, you can open up that um, image and you can edit it and then rotate it to reflect the grain and that will be reflected in the software as well when you add it in. But for now, I'm just gonna go back in. I'm actually going to put this back to uh, Canadian Maple for the moment. And we'll look at some of the other options in our form. Now, right away, you can see there's a machine area color. Now, what this refers to is coloring in the toolpath area. Now, right now, it's set to material color. So that means when I preview the toolpath, it will be the material color. So let's look at that. So there's a button here called Preview Selected Toolpath. There's also one here called Preview All Sides and Preview All Toolpaths. I'm going to preview all the toolpaths just so you can see what it looks like with the material. So this is what the, uh, the uh, preview looks like on the material color setting. Well, what if we use the setting for the surface color? So if I left mouse click on that option there, you'll notice it is now shown a uh, surface color. So what this will be is, let's say you've got a piece of wood and you've painted it black 
and then you want to machine into it to reveal the wood grain underneath but still have that black surface color well this is where it comes in really handy because you can select this option here and let's say you've painted your wood a dark red well you can see what that looks like now in the software in the live view of the preview because you can now see that the grain has been revealed here or the wood uh, layer has been revealed here while the surface has been maintained with that painted color so let's say you, in uh, reality you had a piece of wood that you painted red and you wanted to reveal some wood underneath so you have a natural look in, in the background you can do that with the surface color option now if we go down to the next option which is the global fill color option what that will do is all it will fill all the areas that have been machined away in a color in this case i've chosen a kind of golden golden yellow color so where the toolpath has been cut away that area has been filled in with yellow if i just right mouse click to move around my preview you'll see that the cutout area here and the cutout for the pocket here have been painted in yellow and that's because that is the fill area for the toolpath itself so where the area has been removed where the cutout has been removed okay now the next one we have is the toolpath color and if i left mouse click that this will be for the actual toolpath in question so you notice right now it's only showing the pocket one because my pocket is the one i've got selected if i left mouse click on the cutout one you'll notice that if i set that one to let's say red it will now turn only that specific toolpath red so if you wanted to have a nice visual of your different uh, toolpath uh, cutting strategies and you wanted to uh, show this potentially to a customer so they can clearly see which areas are going to be cut and by what you can use this to your advantage here to try and uh, color these in you could even use this for example it, let's say if you're going to be using a sign that you're going to be painting this is where it also comes in handy where you can let's say you've got a welcome sign and you were going to do the background in black or you were going to do it in blue you can then reflect this in the preview by changing that so you can get an idea of what it might look like when you're going to actually finish it on your cnc machine and then go paint it afterwards so really useful tool there for seeing that what it might actually look like when you finish the project itself then underneath that we actually have a lithophane now we have an entire video dedicated to lithophanes and we have a slider here and that video does go into detail onto how this slider works so i highly recommend if you'd like to learn more about this lithophane option that you check out the lithophane video which we will have linked below I'm just going to go back to the toolpath color for the moment here and i'm going to go to these next options here which are for draw tool and animate preview well like they currently say if you click on or check the draw tool option this will draw to scale the tool that you have selected in the uh, software for your toolpath in this case in the pocket toolpath i'm using a 8 inch end mill or a 0.125 inch end mill and that will be drawn to scale here and if i have the option here to animate the preview that will show the tool cutting around in fact let's have a look at that shall we so if i just reset the preview with this button here to click reset preview that will reset the entire preview back to how it was i'm going to change the toolpath color to a black one and i'm going to use a slider here to change the speed of that toolpath so i'm going to put it to about uh, 30 or 40 percent just down here i'm going to left mouse click and check that my pocket toolpath is selected so you can see it's highlighted in gray there and i'm going to use this option here to preview select a toolpath that means it'll only preview the one i've selected which is the pocket so a left mouse click you'll see the tool is now drawn here on the actual worksheet as it's cutting around on the material and because i've got the animate preview on it's also animating that preview so it's showing us in real time the cut on our worksheet now i did allude to this speed slider here now if i left mouse click and drag this i can speed this up and i can also slow it down if i want to as well so if you want to really have a close look at your preview and what it's doing you can do so by manipulating the slider but you can also speed it right up uh, if you want to uh, go through this much quicker so we can see that it's going to finish up our uh, pocket toolpath here if i just speed it all the way to the top speed nice and quick cuts our, our design and there's our pocket with the color filled in as we set the toolpath color now if i turn off the draw tool option that will still animate the preview it will just not draw the tool itself so you can see here the tool isn't actually being drawn onto the or reflected onto the worksheet here but it will still animate the preview for you so you can still use that and of course if you turn off animate preview 
you won't be able to set the draw tool option because there is nothing to animate. So let's turn those back on and then we'll go into the next section of the form, which is our buttons here for our preview toolpath. Now the first one is the preview selected toolpath and we just went through that. This is where if you select a specific toolpath down here by left mouse clicking on them, you can preview just that selected toolpath. So in this case, if I do just a cutout, it will literally only do the cutout. If I do the pocket, it will only preview this pocket because it is the selected toolpath. Whereas if I click this button down here, which is preview all toolpaths, that will preview all the toolpaths in the software. So if I left mouse click, it'll go through the pocket first. And then because the software knows there is a cutout pass afterwards, it will then preview and cut out that uh, or show that cutout pass as well. And if I reset the preview, you have the option here, which is to preview a visible toolpaths. Now to make a toolpath visible, if I left mouse click this one here, that is now visible. So if I click preview visible toolpaths, it's only going to preview the pocket because that is the only one I've made visible. Whereas if I make both visible and I reset the preview, it will preview only the ones that have been checked. So let's say you have eight toolpaths here and you only wanted to actually preview two of them. What you can do is you can check the two that you want and then click preview visible toolpaths and it'll only preview those two. So quite a powerful tool here in helping you organize your preview. And then let's reset the preview. And then you also notice that we have the option for preview all sides. Now in this case, I do have a double-sided job. So if I come up to the top here and I left mouse click this button, it will flip between the top and the bottom side. On the bottom side, I actually have a vector for another cutout pass. You'll notice on the top side, my uh, cutout didn't cut all the way through. I've got another one on the bottom side here just for demonstration purposes. But if I click on uh, preview all sides, what will happen is it will cut through the top here for the pocket, cut through the bottom and then you notice there the software flipped over and did the bottom side and you can now see there's a gap here where it went through the other side. If I just slow that down so you can see that again, if I do preview all sides, it'll go through the uh, pocket toolpath. I'll just speed that up so we can get through that one first. And then it'll go through onto the cutout pass in just a moment. And then it will flip over to the other side when it's done the first cutout pass on the top side. And you'll see here it flips over and does the back side. So you can see how powerful that is because if you've got a double sided job where you're cutting tool pass on two different sides, you can use the option here to preview all sides. And the software will show you that and you can flip between the sides and see that indeed it has cut out that pass on the back side as well. Now, you also have the option here, which I've used a couple of times here, you notice, which is reset preview. So if I left mouse click that, that will reset the preview to the uh, form of the material before the cut has actually taken place. And you'll also notice that we have some buttons up here as well that have some functionality for the software. So if you click on this button here, this will run the uh, selected toolpath. So if I click on run for now, that will start running the pocket toolpath. You'll then notice I have the option to pause it. So if I left mouse click, I can pause that and I can click on run again to engage that toolpath again and take off uh, where it last stopped. I can also click on this button here to stop that toolpath. So that has now stopped that toolpath where it was and you can see it's still got some areas to cut here, but it lets you manually control the toolpath. So if you want to see or check some areas, like for example, these areas here with the R and the M, and you want to see how they are looking so far in the preview, you can do that. You also have this option here to run a single step, which will run the toolpath in single steps. And you have the option here to run to retract, which is where this will show the preview until the next retract move. So you can click on that. If you have several retract moves in your design, you can click on this option here to run until the next or run to the next uh, retract move. I'm just going to uh, play through this one for now and just get it to finish up this toolpath. And then what we can actually do is look at this option here, which is to undo last. So if I reset the preview and I go to the cutout pass now and I left mouse click to preview the selected toolpath, 
it will do the cutout pass. Now, if I click on undo last, that will undo the last preview. So if I left mouse click on this, it has now undone the cutout because that was the last uh, toolpath that we had ran a preview for. And you can see here, we have the, we have the option here to uh, double click on waste areas in the 3D view to remove them. So let's have a look at doing that actually. So if I now go back into my cutout pass and I'm going to put this to the full uh, depth of the uh, thickness of our material here and I'm going to remove the tabs and click calculate. Now what this will do is it will leave the material here independent of this material here when I cut this out. So let's preview the selected toolpath. So you can see there's no connecting material, no tabs or anything connecting to that outside material. So if I double left mouse click on this material, it removes it and leaves just my sign, just my cutout. So if you wanted to have a preview of what it looks like with just the actual sign itself without this surrounding area of material, you can double left mouse click to get rid of that so you can see what it looks like independently and then move this around at your leisure to have a look at. And then finally, we have this option here which is to save a preview image. Now you can use this option where let's say you have a customer or someone you are making a design for and you want to show them what it will actually look like uh, when you go to cut it. Well, you can use this option here to save a preview image. So let's say you've got a potential customer who wants to see what the sign will look like uh, before you actually go to cut it. You can click on this uh, option here to save a preview image. You can left mouse click and that will create a bitmap and we can call this one, for example, uh, welcome preview and I can save this one out and now I can supply that to a potential customer or to a family or friend uh, member because they can now see what the sign is potentially going to look like so it gives them a nice visual before we commit to actually cutting this out. And of course we then have the option to close out the form which will, as it states, close the form. But at this stage it's also important to uh, point out here that you can also switch between all sheets here as well. So if you have multiple sheets with toolpaths on, you can see all the toolpaths here on multiple sheets if you want to. So if I had more than one sheet here, I could change this drop down here to show all the sheets and I could use that then to preview all the toolpaths uh, for different sheets or indeed switch between different sheets so I can preview toolpaths on specific sheets. But for now, that draws our tutorial on how to preview toolpaths to a close. I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course we look forward to seeing you in the next video.